It sucks. I love dragons and I love the way it looks, but you can already tell right off the bat this thing is basically useless. I don't know, I'm gonna review it anyway. I have no funny comments to put. Let's just start with the design. So the Dragon Power Emperor Strike. Dungeons and Dragons with Nerf Blasters. Yeah, you can see that right there. That's the D&D logo. This is an official Dungeons and Dragons product and a Nerf product at the same time. I never in a million years did I think this was a crossover that would happen, and yet here we are right now. If you somehow don't know what D&D is, it's basically like one of the biggest role-playing games, if not the single biggest role-playing game on the entire planet. I don't actually know too much about the game itself, I just know that it is a megalith of board game. And I guess Hasbro decided at the first opportunity, you know what, I know how we can make more money, we can put the, we can put the D&D logo on our new buttons. That's what we'll do, we'll put the D&D logo on it, and we'll make them vaguely resemble dragons. We'll get all of this out. And when it comes to looking like a prop dragon blaster, holy goodness. This blaster looks absolutely beautiful. It's got so many details, like a ridiculous amount of details that you'd never see in anything else. Let's overview them. Snuck into the shell, you can see this scale pattern texture up across the cheek rest, on the sides of the stock, and across the top on these large plated scale looking things with this kind of gold paint on the outside that surprisingly has not flaked off yet. Neither has the Nerf logo, despite this appearance, that's intentional. You can see that that is actually the plastic that has been sunken in there to provide texturing. And you know what? I love that, because that will actually make it look even better when this thing inevitably gets all banged up from usage in wars. It will just look intentional because that was the design they were going for out of the gate. Somehow, a brilliant idea. The shell is also made with the mark of an artist. You can see so many layers where it looks like strokes of paint going across, like somebody actually had a lot of fun making this. And if you actually pay attention to the way that these lines stroke across the back, you'll notice it looks like a wing folded up sideways to create a wall on the side of the blaster. I just, I don't know how they came up with that. But when you look for it and you see it, they, you never unsee it and it looks great. These fin looking things up on here are actually made of hard plastic that's translucent. So when light shines through it the right way, it almost looks like it's on fire. It's a really weird effect that you kind of have to be in the right lighting to see, but when it does work, it works very effectively. I also like this sort of like sword claw pattern thing going right here, as well as the fact that the priming handle looks like a dragon's underbelly scales. Just a nice little extra detail. I mean, they've put so much effort into the build of this blaster, it's, it's a shame that, that the actual blaster isn't as good as the shell appears to be. If we go to the ergonomics, you can see that it's got a main grip that looks very silly, but it is actually really comfortable. The front and back are super smooth and filleted. The bottom is very thick while the top is a little bit thin, but it ends up actually rounding out because the trigger is pushed so far forward. So you have a space for your hand to go and for your finger to go without anything blocking it. And the trigger pull itself is very smooth and clicky. Now for the prime. As you can see, this thing is kind of the priming handle, and this priming handle is not very comfortable. It's super wide, but there's almost no thickness to it. So your hand just kind of doesn't know what to grab onto or what to put its grip on. And it's really weird, a uh, uh, tactical leg not included, but essentially you just pull it back and then pull it forward. The prime is pretty smooth, even though it has to advance a cylinder. And when you dry fire it, it sounds really cheap. And the funniest part is when you actually fire with darts in it, it sounds a whole lot better. It's like the air restrictor is torturing it, which I don't understand. The blaster definitely does not feel cheap. It feels very, very good. The plastic quality is wonderful. Super thick, super solid. It is the original Nerf standard. It feels great to hold this blaster and to use it. Uh, with that said, uh, yeah, let's get onto the stock really quick and then we'll get on to the disappointing part. The stock is very comfortable, despite the fact that it's obviously short because Nerf always makes short stocks, but it is comfortable, it's smooth and filleted, and you have a nice cheek rest, which gives, which gives you a place to put your cheek kind of in this cup thing. My, my nose hits that. I don't know why, but it always does. 
Uh, let's get to the disappointing part. The functionality of this blaster is so pathetic. So this blaster started the unfortunate trend of the eight shot cylinder fed revolver blaster. Why? There are three blasters. And I feel like there's more of them that are gonna come out that do this exact same thing. But I'm not here to complain about what the blaster is doing. But essentially, you put in your eight darts around the cylinder, you can manually advance it, even though there's not too much space to move it. It does work if you just give it a little bit of time and a little bit of slack. And then you pump it, you fire once. It also has slam fire. So that works too. One extra little detail that this blaster has that I really like, and I didn't do this nearly as good on the other two ports of this, hidden dart storage that will hold exactly eight darts. So you will have a backup reload in the stock completely hidden and saving a lot of space. You don't have those annoying clamp dart holders that always dent your darts. You just have this nice little cup with a nice little clicky mechanism that just works. I mean, why didn't they do this with the other ones? Out of the three blasters that are this kind of mechanism, I like this one the best just because of that little feature. So I'm gonna do four darts normally and then four darts with slam fire. That is the first firing demo I have ever gotten where every single shot went into the target. So, oh my, <laughs> the Dragon Power Ember Strike. What do I think of this blaster? Should you spend $30 on this thing? Absolutely not, unless this design, you love it, you want a prop blaster, or you have plans to modify this thing to make it actually worth your buddy. Stock and just as an effective nerf blaster, no way. Not $30, not on something like this, buy pretty much anything else. Nerf and Dart Zone and Busby and any company, they have all gotten their fair share of revolver blasters, and I can tell you this one is not worth $30. If you want an eight-shot revolver, I would personally say get the uh the the uh 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 the trailblazer. Get the trailblazer. Because that blaster is basically exactly the same, except it's hammer action, it's a pistol, and you can get it for $15, half the price of this one. But definitely, this is an amazing looking prop. It's, it's just so pretty, and the plastic quality is definitely up there. I feel like a lot of the price you're paying just for the thick plastic and the nice details and the amount of effort that went into the shell design. So for a prop blaster that looks like this, I'd say it's definitely worth the money, but not as an effective nerf blaster, definitely not. Definitely don't get this one. So with that said, I will have a link in the description if you want to pick one of these up. With all that said, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you're new, like if you enjoy, comment down below what you think of this blaster or any blaster you like me to review in the future. I will see y'all next time. My phone is steering wheel.